Hey, too. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I, I wanted to first ask, there was a inside the NFL clip um, from last Sunday's game where it looked like you said that you audible to the uh, the game winning touchdown to Devontae. Um, just curious, over the course of a season, over the course of a week, I mean, how much of that is, uh, I guess, those audible options are emphasized in, in practice and how much of it is just kind of like trial and error, getting a feel for, or just kind of having a feel for what you see on the field and you know, on game day? Yeah, I, I would say it's it's a mixture of both. It's a mixture of us having an audible already in the play and then a mixture of just going out there and us playing football and just kind of how the game goes and how it's been going and the matchups that we like out there. So that was a screen play. Looked like they they ran cover zero. Everyone was just to the right. We gave Devontae a, a signal with what we wanted him to run and – uh, he executed that with with the catch and finishing it off with a touchdown. Thanks. And a quick follow up. Um, you know, I, I know you mentioned after the game that they were um, giving you a lot of man looks, especially on like second and long and whatnot. And it and you had some success throwing the ball deep. Um, I guess just how how comfortable are you? Or how more comfortable are you in those situations? And kind of knowing that sometimes uh, um, it seems like whether it was Devontae or Isaiah, you just kind of gave them an opportunity to to make a play on the ball in single coverage, and they came through with it. I'm very comfortable, but I would say it starts with practice, throwing to our guys against man coverage. I mean, in, in, in seven on seven, we go against our defense, uh, practicing man coverage, because that's what our defense runs a lot. And then you get mixtures of zones and, uh, you know, guys just need to be in the right spots. And I need to obviously hit them when they're in the right spots. So, uh, yeah, that's that. David? Hey, so I had a couple of questions for you. Uh, first, uh, you're going to be playing on Monday Night Football for the first time. Uh, so your thoughts on that? And then also the environment uh, in the Superdome uh, it, and you visiting Louisiana where you played in college against LSU. I want to get your thoughts on uh, uh, just Louisiana football fans. Uh, obviously, it can, it can get pretty rowdy out there. Yeah, so for for the first question, it, it's, it's pretty cool. I grew up watching – you know, primetime football, whether it was Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night. So being able to be a part of that and being able to play on Monday night, I, th I think that's super cool. Um, you know, just being in the NFL as it is, is always been a dream of mine. And I know it's been a dream of a lot of the, the guys that are playing in, the, in this league. Uh, and I mean, to answer the second question, it's tough when we went down there to play LSU. So uh, I got to play at uh at the saints uh you know at their their field when we played clemson yeah and uh i mean we all know what happened there right christian and um yeah it, it was it was loud um but you know it it was it was really 50 50 they it was their their side and our side and it was still loud so i'm i'm excited to see what a, a full full uh stadium you know, it was going to sound like. Cool. And the other question I had for you, um, I know you couldn't have been too happy with your interceptions on Sunday. Uh, when you come back from a game with a couple of turnovers, is there a greater emphasis on correcting what went wrong on those plays? Or do you just have to forget about it and prepare the same way? Yeah, I think you prepare the same way, but you you always have to take into consideration those uh, those mistakes. Um, and that was I mean, those those are two costly mistakes. Uh, because both of those led to points and uh, you add them all up. That was 10 points, you know, with the pick six. And then obviously the, the first interception that led to a field goal. So, um, you know, that's something that, you know, I need to be better with as far as the turnovers. And, uh, you know, that that doesn't help us stay on track, uh, you know, in all three phases of the of the game. You can't change field position. Um, the way you want to, you, you don't give the defense a good opportunity to, to, you know, have their offense go three and out. So, uh, you know, that was bad football. Got to obviously not make those same mistakes and uh, move, move on from it. Okay. Um, hi, Tua. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, why do you think you guys have been so receptive to the one day at a time philosophy from Brian Flores? Thank you. Yeah, I think the that mentality just helps us keep into perspective what we're trying to get accomplished now. That's why uh, you don't want to worry about third downs, you know, because if you're too worried about third downs. 
you're not going to get normal down and distance plays correct, or you're not going to understand what your job is, um, you know, on, on that. So um, I would say that's why it's, it's very important that we just focus on what we have to do today and uh, take it, you know, one day at a time. And then obviously the one play and one snap. Mike. Hey, to uh, people uh, looking for Christmas gifts may want to consider uh, two LA's. It's a project that I know you did. Uh, I'm just curious how it came about and uh, what it means to you personally to be able to raise money for a good cause, but do it by doing something that's, you know, your heritage and so close to your heart. Yeah, I would say you really spoke on it. It really just embodies, uh, you know, where I, I come from, uh, my heritage, and then it's also giving back to a good cause. So yeah, that, that's really all, all it is. Yeah. Hey, Tua, I know you've played in a lot of big games and, and, and handled a lot of big moments. I'm wondering, are there any relaxation techniques that you have employed either before or during a game? Um, meditation, breathing exercises, visualization. Are any of those things that you've incorporated into your approach? I've, I've never... I've never done any of those. I've never, uh, never had meditation, um, uh, I guess, exercises for myself before game. I, I mean, for me, it's just making sure that I'm prepared, whether it's looking over the game plan again, uh, you know, really going over my third downs, making sure I'm good with that. And for me, I, I, I feel that's what brings confidence uh, for me. Do you feel like the experience that you've had um, in primetime NFL games, at least a few, that that will in some way be beneficial to you? Well, I think at the end of the day, you, you got to go out and play football. And it's, it's football, whether it's primetime or it's, it's not. You, you got to go out and you got to perform at the best of your ability. Thank you. Alan? Hey, Tua, um, I know you have trust and confidence in all of your receivers, but having Jalen back, how much more comfortable and confident does that make you heading, in, heading into a game against a very good New Orleans defense? Yeah, I would say it helps having Jalen back, uh, being, you know, that he's a threat vertically um, and just speed-wise, you know, whether it's a, it's a juke route or whatever you want to call, it, you know, the routes that he runs. Um, you know, he he gives us good good opportunities for matchups with, you know, whether it's a backer or it's their down safety. And then if they do switch it up, then, you know, it opens up other guys out there on the field. So uh, it's good, um, you know, but we'll we'll see uh, how we go about using everyone else in the game plan this week, too. Thank you. Final two questions, Omar, and then Travis. So I actually have two questions for you. Um, the first is the last time you guys were in a hostile environment. I know the Jets were hostile, but um, was was Buffalo, and there were a lot of communication issues. And I don't know how much the crowd impacted your ability to communicate with uh, with with the teammates. But how are you guys certain that those issues are are in the past? Yeah, I don't think you're ever certain uh, that nothing's gonna ever come back up again. Uh, but, you know, I, I think one thing is for certain is that we've been working on it uh, in practice, our communication with crowd noise. Uh, we do understand that this is going to be um, very hostile um, and it's going to be very loud. So uh, we do understand that we got to get in the huddle. We got to, you know, I got to get things communicated, whether it's the personnel and, uh, you know, we got to give ourselves as much time as possible. So it, we have that that much room, you know, that much more room for error, whereas you're not always playing with the five, four, three, two, one shot clock. Uh, so that is something that we've uh, been working on communication wise and uh, also with signals. And, and the follow up question to you, the, the last two games you've kind of had after the game, a sentiment of knowing you could have played better. Obviously, the two interceptions is, is, is evident, but. Where, where do you feel is the next step for the RPO? You you talked about it after the game. You you felt like you weren't kind of producing as much as you could 
um, in, in the RPO? What what is missing? Where do you feel like is the next step? I think decision making for me. I think there's been a lot of times where I could have handed the ball off, where I I didn't. We could have went for. I mean, I, I would say a lot a lot more. <sighs> you'd call it bigger runs uh, this year. And, you know, for me, I, I've been given a premier look, so I pull it and I throw it and we gain what, six, seven yards. Um, you know, I, I think for me, just being a hundred percent within my, my decision-making in the RPO world and it not being 85, 90%. Travis, last question. Hey, to uh, RPO or otherwise, you guys had your best rushing performance of the season on Sunday. I just wanted to ask you, how a consistent, successful running game impacts the passing game and your job? No, it, it, it helps a lot, right? So, um, this, I mean, this, yeah, the scepter, I mean, yeah. But, sorry, yeah, Duke did really well. Um, Duke did really well. Miles did really well. Those guys uh, um, did did well. They, they seen, uh, you know, the, the holes that the line was opening up for them, but – you know, I, I think hats and, and all credit goes to the line up front. I mean, you know, we've been talking about establishing our run game and, you know, coming off the bye week, that's that's exactly what we did. So uh, hats off to our, our old line for that. This is the big old show.